right, welcome back. I've been gone a while, and uh, I'll explain that. Uh, I did recently upload. I had a friend visit, uh, Zach. If you uh, didn't see the last podcast, go check it out. It's hilarious. Zach's a funny guy. Um, another one coming down from Florida. <laughs> did I say down? I always say down. You know, Florida's Florida's down there, so we're up. You know. Anyway, so I had a uh, I had a friend uh, talking to me the other day, and he said something hilarious to me. He said uh, he was asking me for advice, basically, and I I give the best advice that you can possibly get, like, and I know I give the best advice, and I'll prove it to you in just a second. But uh, he said to me, <laughs> hold on a second. He said, Andy, you're not always right, though. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, nobody's always right, you know? Like, I don't know, like, the next thing that uh, that's going to happen out there. I don't know what the next step is, you know. I have some good ideas of what it is. And I like to conjecture. And I like to make, you know, random thoughts. I like to do uh, thought experiments. But as far as knowing everything, what else do I need to know? They've told us everything anyway. They've told us everything. You know? I mean, I know everything from, like, Britney Spears getting her dog stolen by her dad all the way to uh, Fauci telling us basically that we've been lied to. <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. Yeah, I'm not going to go to, y- you know, nobody wants to go far into the whole vaccine thing and, and the anti-vaxxers versus the vaxxers and all that stuff. But we really, really, really do need to look at the bottom line which is that the people that we're getting all this information from are evil, nefarious liars. So, you know, and some of you are evil, nefarious liars as well and wouldn't mind seeing the takeover. But whatever, I digress. Now, I'm going to tell you the reason why I know that I give the best advice. Because of the old saying, the people who give the best advice can't take their advice. And I can't take any of my advice. So I know I'm giving the best advice that there is. You know? You know and most of my advice, uh, most of the time when people get upset, <laughs> uh, it's because the advice I'm giving them is something they don't want to hear. You know, and most of my advice revolves around uh, fixing yourself completely before you give yourself to somebody or to something, to anything. Uh, one of the reasons I was out was because I was depressed. And when I got out of my depression, I got out of it with a new motto, right? Uh, the <laughs> The motto was, uh, without mastery of self, there can be mastery of nothing. You have to master yourself before you can attempt to master anything. And there's so many people out there that just want to master things now. And they just, they see it before them on the TV, on the news, people, these masters. And they think, I want to be like that. And they don't really think about the fact that you got to like, Okay, in order to be a Tibetan monk who can, like, float and levitate on his chi, you had to have been born into that, started it when you were a child, and not been corrupted by the outside world and influences and wants and desires. And none of you are going to be able to float, right, with your chi. But there's some people that really, really want to do it. And they go join the Buddhist temple, and they sit there, and they try and try their hardest. But... If you didn't start young, 
it's not going to happen. Where is I even going with this, man? You have to master yourself, you know. And this is one of the things I realized when I was in depression, in deep depression mode. Depression is like a, a cocoon. It comes over you when you need to change. If, if everything was right in you, if everything was, was, was lined up correct with you, you wouldn't need to change. Your, your mind wouldn't, you wouldn't become depressed. You would be pretty happy if you had yourself all worked out, you know? But when you don't have yourself worked out and you can't figure out exactly where to go and you're lost in a state of spiritual vertigo, which is another revelation that came to me, uh, I, I had spiritual vertigo. I could not figure out where to go. You know, lost and confused. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that I have not mastered myself yet. So as all these new situations and these new circumstances come up and I try to master them and, and, and navigate my way through the new informational tidal waves that are just pouring in on me, I find myself lacking, you know, like a person who is a person who has fumbled around on the piano but never taken lessons. You know, they think they're very good at it, but they haven't mastered it because they don't know how to play the classics, right? A person may write a song and, uh, and, and record that song and put it out there, and the song may be good, a good song, right? But they don't know how to play that song again right they have not mastered that song so coming back to that song knowing that you hear all of the flaws and everything involved mastering yourself allows you to give yourself masterfully and What's the point of giving yourself to anything or anyone if you're not giving them the best possible version, that best version of the moment? You're cheating people. You don't want to do that, do you? You don't, want to, you don't want to be that person who runs around using others. See, here's the thing. If you spot a person who has not mastered themselves, don't try to get anything from them because they need everything they can get, right? If you are, are latching on to somebody else who's having their own problems and you're trying to get help from them, you're what's known as a psychic vampire, you know? You see a weak one and you snatch it from the back and you drain it and then you toss it aside so if you find yourself in a in, in a in a shitty situation and you know you haven't mastered yourself yet and you haven't mastered the world around you then don't let people come in and take from you because if they do come in and take from you they know that you're not on top of your game. So anything they take from you, they know it hurts you. So that, so that means they don't care if it hurts you, right? They don't give a shit. <coughs> but, uh... Yeah, I, you know, I was talking about Zach. He came to visit me, and, uh... He said... He said something that I've heard from a lot of people. He said, Andy, you smoke a lot. <laughs> you smoke a lot, Andy. Derek said it. Uh, Rich said it. Sconey said it. Uzi said it. Everybody says it. That I smoke a lot. That I smoke probably too much. I mean, shit, dude. I don't know how to I don't know how to explain it. That was part of the whole depression thing too. Like you don't you're trying to you're trying to be somewhere comfortable, 
You know, you're trying to be somewhere safe mentally, right? You don't want to be lost in what everybody wants you to think about. They want you to think about uh, how negatively you're impacting everything around you. That's what everybody wants you to think about, you know? But I smoke a lot because fuck it, you know what I mean? I'm like, sir, smokes a lot. You know what I mean? Fucking, uh, I like big blunts and I cannot lie. <laughs> sir, mix a lot was my jam. Do you guys remember him? If any of y'all are young or something, go look up sir, mix a lot. I like big butts and I cannot lie. No other brother can deny. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get spunk wrong. <laughs> what if Sir Mix a Lot actually just like mixed things? Like, not music, but just he liked mixing shit. Like, he come in your house and like mix up all your stuff and you don't know where anything is. He fucking, uh, he was first in his class out of culinary school. He's just like the master mixer. Sir Mix a Lot goes in to a fucking restaurant with his girlfriend immediately goes to the back kicks open the kitchen door sees a guy back there mixing batter shoots the guy says not on my watch and mixes the batter and then continues to mix everything in the restaurant all in one night <laughs> I would say hire that guy but Instead, you're going to have to hire, like, a boatload of people to come and eat all of the food that he just prepared because Sir Mix-a-Lot does not fucking play around. You know, with Sir Mix-a-Lot running around the world just mixing everything into freaking tornadoes of turmoil, I was wondering how the world is even anything less, anything more than a Van Gogh painting at this point. You know, because it is, it does seem like Sir Mix a Lot has been just running around the world, just mixing everything up. You know, we need a Mrs. Fix a Lot. We need Sir Mix a Lot and Mrs. Fix a Lot. You know what I mean? He'll run around and mix it all up, and then she'll come through and fix everything. Because, God damn, I'm kind of like. <laughs> Sir Mix a Lot. Goes on, uh, goes on tour with uh, Van Doe, <laughs> Lil Van Doe, and Oprah. Oprah, Oprah opens for Oprah opens for them and introduces them. And she's like, "Tonight, everybody's getting a pancake. You get a pancake. You get a pancake. You get a pancake. You get a pancake." <laughs> Everybody gets so hopped up on syrup that they uh, start a riot and they lynch Ben Shapiro. Man. <laughs> That's fucking ridiculous, dude. And my mind goes to the most ridiculous places uh, because I have to find my own solid. I have to find my own place. I have to laugh, you know. That's why I watch, like, podcasts of comedians all the time I love comedy comedians make me happy you know <laughs> and it's important to find something to make you happy because uh, when depression strikes you have to be able to battle it <laughs> you do you know what I mean but uh, always keep in mind that depression is a cocoon and uh, inside of that cocoon with you, there's a higher power shaping you. Name Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> Let's talk about Britney Spears. You want to talk about Britney Spears? Um, I don't know much about it, but everybody's really freaking out on this whole like free Britney thing. And, and apparently she just got out from under the boots of her father who had her in a conservatorship for, you know, pretty much her whole career ever since she went crazy 
which uh, I guess the big question for me is why did Britney go crazy? You know, probably because she was making so much money that people were willing to literally lobotomize her to get at it, even her family. There's so much money there that they're willing to just like, I saw her when her head was shaved. They were probably fucking giving her shock therapy and all that shit, man. But after all is said and done and all this uproar about Free Britney, when the when the when it came down to the court and the final ruling, she still wasn't given full custody of her kids or full cons- full ownership of her money. But she gets to pick whoever is going to run it for her now but that means that she probably did something that they're not telling us about something that they keep deeply hidden you know you know like I don't know who knows what it is you know just speculation like like I'm going to kill this kid and then everybody's like no Brittany no and you know she doesn't actually do it but you know, it goes into the fucking record book forever. Some some crazy shit like that, you know. But uh, she's another instance of where you have to be a master of yourself to master anything else. Or you will be mastered. Somebody will master you. You know? That's uh... John, I don't like, I hate, I hate simple facts, because simple facts, you know, they're simple, I like talking, you know, like, what the fuck's the point of having simple facts, but anyway, with that whole thing, I just was like, okay, so how did Britney make all that money, why did she make all that money, was all of that money coming from teenagers, school children, no, probably not. So from the very moment I saw Britney Spears pop out with that, like, you know, I'm not a little innocent person. I was like, I don't fucking think this is right. How old is that girl? You know, like, you know why I didn't think it was right? Because uh, grown men that, were, that I uh, was around, I saw them look at it look at Britney Spears and I saw their eyes turn in a little black you know and I was like oh creepy so that's the target audience Britney Spears target audience was not teenagers it was pedophiles oh god did I say that did I say pedophiles yeah I did so you know of course like And can you imagine it? At some point, she starts to question that. Not many pop stars question that as it goes on. They just harden themselves to the fact that they're sexual objects, and then they double down on it. That's most of the pop stars out there. You know what I mean? So uh, is it possible that Britney was like, hey, I don't want to be a sex object anymore, and they were like, you're gonna. You're gonna. But, yeah. I don't know why I'm talking about Britney Spears. I just talk about the things that I see, you know, happening on a daily basis. Let's talk about some of the things that I like to talk about. Uh, One of my favorite podcasts uh, is making a comeback. Two of my favorite podcasts. Three of my favorite podcasts making a comeback. What's up with all these podcasts making comebacks? You know? People that disappeared or had been canceled or had some kind of, uh, you know, scandal were gone, and now they're back. And I don't mind. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? But uh, Brian Callen has slowly moved his way back into The Fighter and the Kid, which he was not on for many months. And uh, honestly... I didn't watch the show for that many months (laughs) because it just wasn't funny to me. Um, 
without an actual comedian there to back it up. Now, I'm not saying uh, anything about Brian Callen personally as a man or anything, but as a comedian, uh, he's funny and he's able to kind of hype up the other comedian. So uh, if you haven't seen The Fighter and the Kid, check out that podcast because it's pretty damn funny. Go for some of the earlier ones first. Um, And also, uh, Congratulations Podcast with Chris D'Elia. Now, Chris D'Elia was like, uh, hey, man, I like young girls. And they hit me up on the internet. And, you know, I'm weak or whatever. I don't know what his, I don't know exactly what happened with him. But uh, I, I know there wasn't any kind of physical touching or meeting or anything like that. So. I didn't really care what happened with him either. I just knew that uh, when he got canceled, the fighter and the kid got canceled, and then Secure Team 10, who I'll talk about later, disappeared, I suddenly had to find something else to watch at work. Those podcasts last a long time. Those and uh, this past weekend with Theo Vaughn. Um. Yeah, they're like hour-long podcasts and everything, so it's like I could listen to that at work and just zone out and make books, you know what I mean? Because that's what I do, I make books. But, uh, yeah. Man, it's getting so hot in here. They took out my AC unit to replace the, like, this behind me in that wall. It's just a big empty closet on the balcony that is supposed to have an AC unit blowing in beautiful cool air in a nice in a nice uh, conditioned fashion now I have this rickety ass window unit that drips water onto my floor I had to move everything I don't have AC in my bedroom so I had to move my bed out into the living room where it's kind of cool because there's a window AC unit, but what am I paying rent for? What am I paying for, you know? And I swear sometimes landlords act like you should be thankful for them or something. Like you're paying them for a service, and then when you have problems with your service like uh, it took a while for them to actually get to fixing my AC so a good you know week went by and then as days went on it took long a long time for them to even bring the window unit so I'm like and then when I talked to them about signing my lease which is over at the end of this month they're like we hope you do and I'm like well I hope that you fucking move me into a new better apartment and don't charge me anything more (laughs) Anyway, oh man, so uh, yeah, let's recap, I'm usually right about things, sometimes I'm wrong, you know, I don't know everything, and my mind can change very easily, so depending on, you know, when I see, if I see false evidence confronted, I'll change my mind, you know what I mean, especially if, you know, Especially if it's proven to me right away, then my mind will change right away. I'll have to do you know, my own research, but anyway, last topic, uh, we're going to talk about the vaccine. I know I might get flagged for this or something, but we have to do it. Um, I'm not bitter or angry with anybody. I am worried about everybody. That's it. So anytime you hear me express any kind of concern, it's out of worry. And I hear so many people come at me with different little uh, cliche sayings, you know, about my logic behind the vaccine and my position on the vaccine. But they're all easily torn apart. It's all easily torn apart, okay? Um, And I just want to say that your 
Lord and Savior Fauci has already said the vaccine will not prevent you from getting COVID and it will not prevent you from giving COVID. And if that's the case, then what the hell are they giving you all? You know? Don't be mad at me for not wanting to take this chemical, you know? I was a drug addict. I learned the dangers of putting too many fucked up chemicals in your body. You know? I know the dangers now of the chemicals that I'm taking, like nicotine and the chemicals they put in the cigarettes. Uh, The food that we eat has chemicals in it. But we see all of these. These are vices, okay? And we know about them. It's in plain English, you know? They write on the package, Clumsorbium clonsclotisclate. What the hell is that? Enzomium fructoctonine. You're like, what is that? I don't know, but it's in your food and it's in the shit that you drink. You know what I mean? But we also have old people in the world. So that means that not all of our food and drinks and not these chemicals aren't completely killing people, right? So don't say, oh, you'll put all these other chemicals in your body, but not this one. That is the most ridiculous and ludicrous argument ever. Ever. Okay? Your body is a temple, and it can take a certain amount of stress. As a matter of fact, that's what it's for. You're not supposed to be completely stress-free your body would have nothing to do right you would have nothing to process your muscles would have nothing to work on but to take something from a group of people that has clearly lied to us many times in the past and to just inject it god man it's like And the inability to say, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I was wrong about a few things as this whole COVID progression happened. Let me go back and look at my podcast. I'm not taking them down because it's a natural progression of being wrong to being less wrong as time goes on, as you learn things, you know? Like, but the main idea the main gut feeling that I had from the very beginning that this is all a setup is still there. And I don't know what's being put into people with this vaccine, but I hope that we never have to find out. I hope that, I hope it just goes into history and 150 years from now, people are still vaccinating. I hope this chemical becomes a vaccine Because as of right now, the only vaccine that exists in the world for coronavirus is inside the bodies of people who naturally caught coronavirus and built the antibodies. That's the only place that there's a vaccine. Well, that's it for me, guys. Uh, If you enjoyed listening to me, if you fell asleep listening to me, (laughs) then wake up and make pancakes. I'm the nice ghost. You know, if I was a ghost, I'd be nice. I'd be like, you forgot to set your alarm. You know, or like, Wear a condom. (laughs) Can you imagine? You're about to get down with a chick, and then, like, this ghost hovers in the corner of the room. This black, inky, tentacled creature 
creeps out of the dark corner of your room and covers the bed and says, you should wear a condom. <laughs> Hit like, subscribe if you haven't. ASMR.